if binge watching TV or Netflix and mindlessly scrolling through social media have become the main way to spend your free time, it's time to mix it up. Mix up your routines. After all, there is more to life beyond the latest shows and other people's photos. Now, I'm not talking about cleaning out the garage or organizing the pantry. Hi, I'm Charlotte Volch, certified probate specialist and trust advisor. And on this channel, we teach you everything you need to know about probate and trust, including buying and selling property. And today, we are just looking at an off topic, off the path for fun and for free. And if you're looking for something to do with your time that's fun, that's free, and different from the rut or routine you've gotten yourself into, especially with any kind of distance travel was of an option, consider these 20 ways to entertain yourself. Work on your family tree. Pull out the board games. Work on a jigsaw puzzle. Set up a craft corner. Look through your old yearbooks. Call a friend. Start a blog. Go on a nature hike. Read a book. Bake a cake. Write a letter to a family member. Hold a scavenger hunt. Get some exercise. Do something good. Browse a bookstore. They are open. Go on a picnic. Watch airplanes or trains. Go to a dog park. Try bird watching. Be productive. So let's start with item number one. Work on your family tree. Claymont Scanton, a Philadelphia-based owner of memoirs and more, helps people publish books about their family history. And even if you don't go as far as writing a memoir, Scanton says that there are a lot of fun things you can do alone or with your kids or your grandkids or maybe someone else's kids. Work on a family tree together, he suggests, and draw it. Do it in PowerPoint, maybe include photos of people, draw countries of origin, make it fun. She also suggests holding a storytelling hour where you tell your family stories. You could interview the grandparents on the phone or maybe use Zoom and then hit record. Scotland says that there are free genealogy websites. A big one is familysearch.org. If you don't have kids or they're out of the house, she suggests, as I just did, it would be a good time to consider how you store and display family photos and documents. You could create an e-collection to share with the whole family, even though they may be all out. And this is a great suggestion. Now, item two is to pull out the board games. This is one of those obvious ideas, but have you done it lately? Surely you have a Monopoly board, maybe a chess game or Risk. It only sounds cheesy until you start playing. And remember why board games became so popular in the first place. Number three, work on a jigsaw puzzle. Trade puzzles with friends, which could lead to hours of fun. And if it's your puzzle, consider gluing and framing it after you're finished to hang it in your home. This is great for the kids especially. And they can see the accomplishments of their work framed and motivating to do more fun things together. Number four is to set up a craft corner. Now, that's an idea from Amy Maliga. She's a financial educator with Phoenix-based Take Charge America which is a non-profit financial counseling agency. And she envisions it for families with young children, but arguably a craft adult might enjoy this too. I have several friends who have started doing this when they were a young family and continue the tradition now with their grandkids. And it's a great way to save memories together. She suggests that you set up a small table in the corner of the family room, or if weather allows, maybe out on a patio with paper and glue and stickers and paints and crayons and glitter and other craft supplies. And then 
keep the table stocked at all times so it's ready to go whenever anybody's got a creative thought or their juices are flowing and they can just go to that table with a sheet of paper or their pictures or whatever and begin to start that whole process while minimizing the clutter. Number five is to look through your old yearbooks. Feeling nostalgic? Even though you're probably connected with some of those people on social media, there's nothing like paging through yearbooks and reading the messages to make those memories come all back. And Malika says that additionally, she continues that if you have kids, they'll see a big difference with you and your 80s hair or the crazy 90s fashion and hearing some of the best stories that you have to tell. This just brings a new connection with your family at a whole new level of your own days of grappling with independence or maybe even rebellion. <laughs> Number six, call a friend. Now that you're getting all nostalgic looking at those yearbooks, why not call a friend that you've lost touch with? You could go the old fashioned route and call with video, but you could also do FaceTime or a video chat. Either way, talk really is cheap and you'll get a really good reconnection with that old friend. Number seven, start a blog. If you're thinking or saying out loud, really Charlotte, hang with me. Because an online project such as starting a blog, a podcast, or a YouTube channel not only allows for a creative outlet, it's an opportunity to learn something new and it's something inspiring for doing just that. There's even the potential for these things to gain some momentum and make some money over the medium long term. Ben Taylor, who's the founder of homeworkingclub.com, which is an online website for freelancers and homeworkers, highly encourages that. He says the great thing about these projects beyond being highly diverting is that they involve learning some new skills and building something tangible. And individuals can work alone and parents can involve children. Younger ones love to be videoed or interviewed and the older ones will enjoy things like sound and video editing. So it's another potential family project, allowing each to explore new learning and new achieving while adding to the family memory archives. Number eight is to go on a nature hike. Get out of your house and into the great outdoors. There are some nature parks that have admission fees, but for the most part, it's often free. And alltrails.com is a great website to check out to find trails right near you. If you're a camper, this may be an excellent time to plot a route, pitch a tent, and just spend the night. So putting one foot in front of the other on a hike is one of the least expensive and healthiest forms of recreation that there is. You can find a recreation area just about anywhere and after you acquire the essentials, the gear will last a really long time. Jeff Alt, who's the author of numerous hiking books, including A Walk for Sunshine and Get Your Kids Walking, says that much research has emerged about the mental health benefits of walking and immersion in nature. So a walk in the woods keeps your body fit, it enhances positive thoughts, inspires creativity, and helps you distress from the daily grind. You could come back and work on that craft corner. So in my years of hiking with our son, it was not only great for exercise and exploring, but it was great for conversations that continue on through his early adulting life right now, which I consider priceless. Number nine is read a book. Surely you have some favorite titles laying around the house that you would like to revisit or ones you purchased that you haven't gotten around to reading yet. And if you're looking for a new book, try your library. Now Maliga suggests downloading the Libby app. It's a free app that connects you directly to your local library and it allows you to check out eBooks, audiobooks and you'll need a current library card to get started, but this is a great way to connect with like-minded people in your sphere through maybe creating a book readers club. 
This is where you meet on the phone, maybe through Zoom once a week to explore the next chapter and share insights. I've been doing that for 14 years and it's great. Number 10, bake a cake or cookies. If you have eggs, flour, sugar, and other staples, you might even want to try to create something of your own from scratch. Or try out a new recipe and cook something special for dinner. Number 11, write a letter to a family member. Now we're not talking about sending an email, but writing an old fashioned letter. Even better, send that letter to a relative at a nursing home or a retirement center or someone that's been isolated or alone. Or take a cue from Jennifer Buchholz, mother of three. She's a director of marketing for the English Contractor and Remodeling Services in Cincinnati. And she says to send a letter to someone else's relative. I love this thought. Growing up, I was a candy striper in a local nursing home, and I learned at the young age of 12 to 15 that many of the people there rarely had visitors, and they so loved having us come to their rooms to visit or take them on a walk or a wheelchair stroll through the grounds. And getting mail for them was off the charts ecstatic. They would read it carefully or ask me to read it to them and then they'd hold it like a precious gem that it was. This wonderful activity will feed your heart as well as theirs. And if you teach this to your children and set a day each week or every other week to do it as a family, you will be setting in place a generous and giving tradition as part of your legacy. Believe me. Number 12. Hold a scavenger hunt. It's a lot of fun for kids or anyone really. And uh, Jennifer has mentioned that in her neighborhood, different residents have organized different scavenger hunts. One was a fairy door hunt where someone hid painted fairy doors all over the neighborhood and left clues on where they could be found. And they had over 50 fairy doors hidden all over the neighborhood. She said most of them are still there. It's also something you can get friends and family involved in who don't live in the area. So for instance, if you're a grandparent, you could make a list of 20 photos you'd like to see, such as your grandkids with their pet, or maybe a photo of them on a picnic, or maybe a local landmark you're familiar with, and see if they can find all 20 items on the list. That's great fun. Number 13, get some exercise. Woo hoo, imagine that. You can exercise without spending money on a gym membership or even buying equipment. Just turn on the music and dance or go for a walk or a run. You'll be amazed at the number of people you'll find on the trails doing the same thing. And oftentimes you can find a group or a partner to buddy up with and keep each other accountable on this new adventure together. You'll stay consistent with this movement. Your body, your mental health is going to thank you big time. Number 14, let's do something good. Volunteermatch.org lists a lot of causes and organizations that adults and teenagers can work with. So you just type in your zip codes to see a slew of volunteer opportunities that will pop up and you just choose which ones work best for you. Uh, there's one that uh, Jennifer had mentioned was for a um, medical technician, yeah. So if something like that interests you, makemeafirefighter.org has information on becoming a volunteer firefighter or a volunteer EMT. You know, the old saying is you can't do good without feeling good. And that is so, so true. Number 15, browse a bookstore. Or you can browse any store. As long as you won't buy anything, window shopping is totally free. Number 16, go on a picnic. Weather is perfect now for that. Pack some sandwiches, pull whatever you have out of your pantry and fridge, and go for a safe picnic. Go to a park, take a blanket if there's no tables. Suddenly you're creating this wonderful memory with your family or friends. And it's just another, another one of those endorphin stimulators that elevates everything. 
17 is watch airplanes or trains. A lot of airports and train stations have viewing areas for people to sit and watch, but you can also do it from outside. This was a fun, fun memory making experience with our son. And I did it when he was between one and 11 years old. Dad went with us too on Saturday trips to the smaller airports close by. And we even organized a field trip for our homeschool group to the local small airport. And the kids got to take turns sitting in the front seat of a small Cessna 150. Wow, was that exciting. And it added to the fun of going to the edge of the runway field and sitting in the car to watch because he would have those previous memories of, remember what I saw in there? For some people, this sounds as fun as watching paint dry, but for those who love travel and aircraft and locomotives it can be serene almost like meditation like i mentioned with our son kids often enjoy watching planes and trains too especially boys number 18 go to a dog park it's best of course if you have a dog but even if you don't you just find a bench watch them run and play an added bonus is people watching is fun too and who knows what friendship you may start right there. And number 19, try bird watching. Bird watching has regained some popularity in recent years, especially during the pandemic when people had to stay close to home. There's no doubt that if you want to spend a fortune on bird seed and bird feeders, you can certainly do that. But the actual watching part, right from your home or on a nature hike, totally free. Number 20. Be productive. Yes, I said that you could clean that garage or organize the pantry another day, but some people really do enjoy cleaning, really. And sometimes getting things done, and checking those tasks off of a to-do list can be a helpful way to reduce your stress, especially if you follow it up with a reward later. There's something for everyone on this list and new activities maybe to weave into traditions that could be living on through you, through your legacy. Enjoy, look forward to seeing you next time.